Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. And thank you so much to everyone who helps support the creation and production of this show through their help at patreon.com slash SW7x7. So this is our deep dive episode related to Infiltration. That's the first of the two-parter that we got earlier this week from the Bad Batch. And we're going to talk about the Clone Assassin program, the Clone Troopers are also known as Clone X Troopers or CX Troopers or Sniper Clones. Like, yeah, like any good covert program, you don't quite know what to call it. And then you come up with a bunch of different names and everybody gets confused and it just makes it that much more secretive. So here's the official word on them. This is in the databank on the StarWars.com website. A division of specialized clones trained in a deep undercover program by Dr. Royce Hemlock. They're a group of mysterious and formidable assassins and shadow warriors. Activated one at a time to avoid detection, their identifying codes have been wiped and their identities erased. They're conditioned for one mission alone, to hunt down and eliminate any potential threat to the Empire. You can kind of think of them as almost an amalgam of the Bad Batch itself. I mean, they seem to have the abilities that Hunter and Crosshair and Tech and Omega have together. Not necessarily the same bulky build as Wrecker, and so, yeah, that's maybe the one difference. But, yeah, the capabilities are pretty startling and amazingly dangerous. This is not the first time we've seen them, though, and we did mention that briefly, but the first clone assassin we saw was referred to as Clone X, and that character showed up in Season 2 of The Bad Batch. The character had been deployed by Vice Admiral Rampart, if you remember that guy, and the whole point of that was to try and keep secret what they had done at Camino about the bombing of Topoca City and other cities on the planet to destroy any record of the clone operation, right? And so this Clone X had been deployed to get rid of any other witnesses or survivors and keep the word from getting out. Unsuccessful, as we know. And when captured, they have what is the Star Wars equivalent of what would have been the Cold War fake cyanide tooth in the mouth, right? They have what's referred to as a suicide shocker where they get to bite down on it and it gives them an electrical shock that kills them. Now because of the fact that they are apparently only dispatched one at a time, when Rex talks about the fact that they'd been seeing a shadow around them in you know, various places after they capture this next one, which is being referred to as CX-1, it would seem to imply that CX-1 is the one that has been following them around, that it hasn't been any other one particularly, especially then when the next one is activated and it's referred to as CX-2. So, I don't know, maybe they put CX-1 away for a while and then they activate CX-38 and say, all right, you go run around for a while. I don't know, but it does seem like they're setting it up as a sequential sort of thing. But the other things that we find out about these CX Troopers is that they also have some sort of internal homing device, and whatever it is, is sophisticated enough that it can't be picked up by normal scanning, because Rex and company did not detect it, but Crosshair knows that that's the case, and then when Scorch activates CX-2, Scorch says, hey, yeah, this guy's internal homing device is still working, so we know he's alive. And it kind of does suggest that that internal homing device isn't necessarily anything to do with the suicide shocker tooth either. So, oh uh, yeah, that's kind of a big deal. They also carry around highly encrypted target pucks, which is very reminiscent of the pucks that we see in The Mandalorian. So that was kind of a cool little thing to come across. And thanks to Crosshair, we actually know a bit more about them. So this is also, I guess, thanks to Omega as well, who is starting to get him to open up a little bit more more, but Crosshair reveals to the rest of the gang that all of these clones, well, basically he starts off with the idea that the clones on Tantus, not all of them are prisoners, that some of them are actually working for the Empire, and presumably there's a smaller subset, right, which are the clone assassins or the CX troopers, because Scorch obviously is not one of those. And it seems like Similar to Crosshair, or at least similar to how Crosshair had previously been, they were already particularly psyched about the Empire and then went through additional conditioning to get them to be you know, crazy fanatically loyal and absolutely insane with their abilities and whatnot. And when earlier in the season, Hemlock 
makes a reference to Crosshair resisting their re-education efforts. That seems to be what Crosshair is referring to in this infiltration episode when he talks about how they tried to make him one of these crazy fanatical clone assassins, but for whatever reason just wouldn't take, and he blames it on being defective which is sort of the internal joke that the Clone Force 99 guys use. And as Wrecker said in a previous episode, defective and effective. But yes, Crosshair's desirable mutation seems to have been preventing the Empire from turning him into one of these fanatical clone assassin troopers. He also says, Crosshair does, that not everybody survives the program, so he's probably also very lucky to have survived, and maybe his quote-unquote defect is actually something that helped him survive it as well. So the Empire has already lost two of these guys. We don't know how many of them they actually have ready to be activated, but you could imagine that if the threat to the Empire was bad enough that... <laughs> the fine folks at Tantus would just activate all of these clone assassins. And considering that Rex and company have taken Tantus on the brain, yeah, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of these clone assassins in later episodes of The Bad Batch this season, including CX2, who managed to survive not only having part of a building dropped on him, but an insane waterfall drop too. So, uh, yeah, they definitely come out different after the training, like Crosshair said. And so that's what I've got for you on our deep dive into season three, episode six of The Bad Batch, that's Infiltration, and that's going to do it for this episode of the show. And if you haven't done so already, I hope you'll consider doing one or all of these three things that you can help more people find out about this daily dose of Star Wars joy. That would be leaving a rating or review on the app of your choice, hitting the subscribe, like, join, follow button on the app of your choice, and even just telling a friend, tell somebody else who loves Star Wars that you know that, hey, they might want to check the show out too. And I hope you'll also consider helping to support the creation and production of this show as we approach our 10th anniversary in July by joining us at patreon.com slash SW7X7. Those sevens are numbers, so it's S, W, the number seven, the letter X, and the number seven. And that's going to do it. So <laughs> it just remains for me to say, thank you so much for joining me for this episode as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. By seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.